In this video, I'm going to show you how to make perfect cuts with a miter box. Hey guys, it's David here from David's DIY Reviews. On this channel, we do a lot of DIY builds, tool reviews, and tool how-to videos just like this one. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for a lot more really great content. And you know, a miter box is a really great tool to have. I know a lot of people think it's old school, you know, they just have electric miter saws. But you know, if you live like in an apartment or you know, in a condo like I do, you've got kids, you're trying to make not too much noise, but still get some work done. A miter box is a really great option for just making quick, small cuts, you know, doing hobbies, crafts, trim work around the house, anything like that. I really like to have a good miter box kicking around. And I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of one right now. So often when you buy a miter box, they'll come with a saw, but if you have one and you don't have a saw for it, a good tenon saw or a back saw like this will, will work perfectly. Their back saw is because of the spine down the back of the saw, and that's gonna keep the saw really rigid when you're cutting. Japanese pull saws work really well, but any good you know, cross-cut hand saw is gonna work in a miter box perfectly for you. Now this miter box I have, it's got 90 degrees and 45 degree cuts. A lot of ones you'll buy will have 22 and a half degrees, which is between the 90 and the 45. And often they'll have like a, a 45 degree bevel cut on either end. So you can lay trim down or wood down and cut like that. But just 90s and 45s, you'll get a lot of work done with a miter box like that. So also a lot of miter boxes you'll buy will come with clamping points. This older one doesn't, but the first thing you want to do is clamp down your miter box and you want to clamp it in such a way that your clamps aren't going to be in the way of your material you're cutting or your saw. So you just clamp it, I generally clamp it uh, corners, kitty cross from each other, and that's going to keep it in place while you're cutting. You want it to be hanging onto the box as well as your material. And the first neat tip I have for you, if you want your miter box to last a long time, is you can actually lay a scrap piece of wood under the piece of wood that you're cutting and that's going to keep you from cutting into the box itself and it's going to make your miter box last a lot longer. That's a really great thing to do. So when you use a miter box, you want to hold the material against the front of the box away from you. And the reason for that is the type of saw you're using, a back saw or a tenon saw, cut on the forward stroke. So when you're putting pressure as you're cutting, it's going to actually be holding the wood against the front of the box. So you kind of start like any saw, just getting your start cut started going backwards and then you're going to want to cut on the forward stroke as you cut with a miter box. And as you get to the end of your cut just make sure you flatten out your saw nice and flat with the bottom of the uh, miter box so that you don't cut into the corners of it. So if you were doing trim work and for instance wanted to do an inside 90 degree cut what you do is you'll just go ahead and cut the corner of your piece off at 45. And then once you've got your one piece cut, you just could take the other one and just cut the opposite 45 degree angle on it like that. So then you would just go ahead and cut the opposite 45 degree angle on the other piece. And then that's going to leave you with your two pieces cut exactly at 45 degrees to make that inside corner. And opposite of that inside corner, making the same cuts will leave you with a perfect outside corner. And like I said, a miter box is a great tool to have around. I mean, you can use them for trim work, you can make picture frames, you know, just little hobby, craft, woodworking stuff. Anytime you need that perfect 45 or 90 degree cut, or like I said, newer ones are going to have that 22 and a half, which is in between, they're a great go-to tool. And if you're looking for how-to videos on other woodworking hand tools, check out this playlist I have. It's a lot of great content on how to use, you know, basic intermediate woodworking tools. And like always guys, see you in the next video.